Silver and gold investors, we have some bad news to cover, but we have some good news as well, which will make it crystal clear why we will get $2,500 gold this year. Yes, 2024. At least it sure looks that way. And who knows how high that could drive the silver price. We're going to talk about some crazy information about the commercial real estate bubble that's right now in this country. Bankruptcies taking off. Let's start out by talking about the bad news. Are we in a bubble? Are we in a bubble bubble that spells trouble, trouble, but will spell good news for the price of silver and gold, right? That's why you've bought silver. That's why you bought gold, to protect yourself against potential calamity. And I just want to remind you of something, right? I know it feels like, and when I talked with Lynette Zhang a few months back, she said, it feels crazy. I know it feels crazy because when things are about to break, it starts to feel a little crazy out there. And I want to remind you, I don't know how old you are, okay, but I'm 53 years old. I lived through the tech bubble. I was a young man. I worked in the tech industry from 1995 through, well, I don't know, 20 years or so. I owned my own company at the end. But during that period of 95 through about the year 2000, it was crazy in the tech field. Everything was great. Everything was wonderful. Everybody was getting rich. Everything was great until it wasn't great. Are we in a period like that right now where everything's fine, right? Everything, house prices are good. They're done. Employment's great. Everything's great, but the warning signs are everywhere. What about 2008, the other major crisis that we had in this country? I remember that as well. I was running my own business. I had an office and there were all these mortgage guys that were renting offices near me in this very nice uh, city place in St. Louis. And all these guys were renting all this office space around me, and I would overhear them talking about these real estate deals they were doing. They were all making money. It was all great until it wasn't. Are we facing that similar type situation right now? And when that happens, right, what have we learned? After the tech bubble burst, the price of gold and silver skyrocketed. After the mortgage crisis, the great financial crisis of 2007, 2008, the price of silver and gold skyrocketed. Are we in that same situation now, but are we in it at an even more extreme level? The E word, not extreme, no, escalated. I heard somebody say everything has been escalated. Everything's bigger. The Fed's going to have to respond faster and bigger with new and more creative acronyms. No more QE. They'll have whatever they want to call it. They'll make up stuff. I'm using good words because this is a family show. And I appreciate you being here. Please give this a thumbs up. It looks like my thumb. You press the button. It's free and it help, helps get the word out to more people. Okay, so thank you for that. Now, we, America, are you in America or are you in a foreign country? It doesn't matter foreign to America. America is a foreign country to you if you live in a different country. But nonetheless, congratulations, America. Yes. Jo amongst Joe Biden's many accomplishments, he's also accomplished racking up now uh, $34 trillion in debt here in the United States. And I was listening to this guy, Jim Willie, Dr. Jim Willie, the other night. He's put throughout the idea that quite possibly we're already in default. The United States like cannot pay its bills. I mean, realistically, we can't pay our bills because we're spending more, we're borrowing more every year with the over $1 trillion deficit. And we're using part of that money that we're borrowing to pay off other debt that we'd already borrowed. Are we already in a state of default? Think about this. When a person goes bankrupt, okay, have you ever gone bankrupt? I never have gone bankrupt. I don't have any debt. I hate debt. I've always hated debt. Debt is the currency of slaves. That's what they say. Silver is the currency of gentlemen. Gold is the currency of the royalty. Well, I'm, I guess, a gentleman? <laughs> Our new channel sponsor, Fortuna Silver. That's a stock that I've owned for years and years. You can check them out at fortunasilver.com. They've grown the company at a great, great rate over the last almost 20 years. 
But look, their balance sheet's in great shape. It's a company that I believe in. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm not telling you ever what to buy or sell. But I think that it's worth your time to check out Fortuna, fortunasilver.com. If you go bankrupt, let me tell you how it works. You just don't wake up one day and say, huh, I think I'm bankrupt. It's a process. Default is a process. It takes time. It has to build and build and build and build. And I'm not putting words in this man, Mr. Willie's mouth. He was on Arcadia Economics, Chris Marcus, a friend of our channel, and a great source of great information. But he brought up this point that like maybe, maybe we're already in the process of going bankrupt. He showed pictures of the Long Beach um port which is where all these container ships come in to unload it's like supposedly it's empty and it's like never empty and he said well maybe it's because people aren't wanting the dollar anymore i don't know very interesting as we head into 2024 seven trillion dollars worth of u.s debt needs to be refinanced in 2024 Seven trillion dollars worth of U.S. debt needs to be refinanced in the coming year. That's a lot of money, guys. And we don't know who's going to buy that debt. As we're talking about this calamity that we could be heading into in, in the United States, seven trillion that needs to be refinanced. Think about it. Let's put our let's use our let's use our heads. You're analytical. I'm an analytical person. I know that. That's why we come here. We want to put the pieces together and develop a thesis. If the United States was heading into big financial trouble, would it then not make sense that when they went through the whole debt ceiling debacle months back, right, that they wouldn't it make sense that they didn't raise the debt ceiling? No, they didn't raise it. No, 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 no. They went for the atomic bomb. They said, we're just going to suspend the entire debt ceiling until 2025 what are we heading into i ask you are we going to look back and say duh we should have known they suspended the debt ceiling they made it so they have an open checkbook to print to spend money as much money as they want are we going to look back a year from now and say see we should have seen that's what a black swan event is a black swan event is something that happens that's extreme but in hindsight, you look back and say, duh, I should have seen it coming. I don't know. I don't know. It's for you to decide. But here's the, here's the kicker. Here's what's really going to send the price of silver to $65. Gold, $3,000 or higher. $2,500 will be nothing. But I'm going to show you from a technical perspective later with a brand new chart why $2,500 is very much in the cards, according to one of the top technical analysts in the world. No matter how you slice it or dice it, <laughs> no matter how you adjust the smoke machines and the mirrors and the fun, uh, Fed Funhouse, no matter what Jerome Powell says, the head of the United States Federal Reserve, Gomer Pyle. Surprise, surprise, surprise. You know what he's going to say? He's going to say, surprise, 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 America. The only way that we can deal with this in 2024 is by printing money. But he's not going to call it money printing. He's not going to come up after his Fed emergency and say, we had to start printing money. We had to monetize the U.S. debt, but that's exactly the only. You can, you can call things what you want. You can make up names. You can blame whoever. But the only way that the United States is going to be able to get out of this predicament, right, to, to uh, perpetuate the system is by printing money. I'm telling you, we are set up. Right? The table is set for big time inflation next year, while at the same time, it's, it's him being in the box. Here's the box. That's inflation. And that's a recession. Right? You know who's in a box? Yeah, that old guy. Boy, he's curled up. Yeah, good old Jerome. There he is. Everybody say hi to Jerome. Jerome is in a box. That box is called stagflation. Stagflation is the most fertile soil, the best environment for unbelievable returns in the precious metals. Right? Do we know for sure that it's going to happen? Maybe I'm dead wrong. Silver and gold investors, do you remember 
You remember what it's like to have great gains? <laughs> it's been a while, especially silver investors, especially investors in precious metal mining stocks. It could happen. In the, in the real technical world, they call that an asymmetric risk, that the risk of, of going down is so much more outweighed by the re potential returns to the upside. For an example, let's say with silver, we're at what, 23? We'll say we're at 24. We're not, but we're, we'll say we're at 24. The risk of silver going from $24 an ounce to $10 an ounce or 14 an ounce, right? The, the odds of that happening are far outweighed by the idea that silver could go to $85 an ounce, $65 an ounce, okay? That's called an asymmetric risk. Sure, it could go down. We always have to be prepared for the worst case scenario, right? John Carrier that started the Carrier uh, uh, Air Conditioning Company used to say he always prepared for the absolute worst. And then in his mind had to be okay with the worst case scenario playing out. And then everything else, and, and good things do happen, right? We could see easily this year, right? Silver have great returns, right? In the next five years, the next 10 years, we, we know the fundamentals that are supporting this idea of much higher silver. This is from the Telegraph UK newspaper, talking about what's going on right now in the U.S. banking system. We need to know about this because this is the environment in which we are investing right now. It says, sobering analysis by four of the country's leading financial experts says this comfort blanket has created a beguiling illusion of stability. What they're talking about is the emergency lending, the, what's it called, the the BTFP, the Bank Term Funding Program, uh, where federal authorities bathed America's struggling regional banks in short-term liquidity, disguising the slow burn damage of the U.S. commercial property slump. The underlying crisis in the banking system continues to deepen as five trillion, five trillion of commercial real estate debt taken out during the zero uh, rate era comes due in tranches. That means comes due in groups over the next, what? One year, two years, three years, five trillion. And they're letting them hide it, right? On the uh, With the Fed. Quote, it's not a liquidity problem. It's a solvency problem, said Professor Tomasz Pizorski, a banking specialist at Columbia University. Quote, temporary measures have calmed the market but half of all U.S. banks are running short of deposits with assets worth less than their liabilities. And we're talking about $9 trillion, he said. We've got massive issues coming up with the uh, commercial real estate sector. That's all coming due next year. Now, now let's look at that. At the, so we got... Five trillion in commercial real estate debt. I'm not saying that's all next year. I don't know if that's one year, two year, three, but it's all coming due in tranches. Okay. The underlying commercial real estate is worth 60, 70 cents on the dollar. Big problems for the banks. Okay. While at the same time, our government's going to be trying to refinance seven trillion dollars in uh in in u.s treasuries i don't know guys it doesn't seem to me to end well this debt stuff this debt bubble and it's not just the united states right sure we got 34 trillion in national debt the world right and that's like what 130 percent of gdp the world has 307 trillion and i've read that's like 200 percent of the world gdp it's it's a very very scary ugly situation on top of that this comes from Zero Hedge. U.S. bankruptcies jump 18% in 2023 amid high interest rates. Overall bankruptcies in the United States jumped by a fifth in 2023 as both businesses and households struggled with high interest rates and the end of pandemic stimulus. We expect the increase in numbers of consumer and commercial bankruptcy filers to continue into 2024, given the runoff of pandemic stimulus. Let me get your hands on some gold or silver before maybe it gets to be a little bit too late. Let's thank our other channel sponsor, Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com. They're an online bullion dealer. They have silver. They have gold. 
They have platinum. They have great customer service. They've got great selection. And they have great, great prices. We're going to talk about the technical chart in terms of what's going on in gold. Gold will lead the way for silver. Gareth Soloway is a leading analyst, a guy who everybody listens to when it comes to his technical analysis of a number of different assets, but one of which that he follows closely is gold. Gareth Soloway is talking about how gold could easily go to 2500 in 2024. Here's why. This is a new chart. It's called the head and shoulders pattern. So when you're looking at me right now, I've got two shoulders and a head. That's what the pattern looks like. I'm going to show it to you upside down first. There's a shoulder. There's a shoulder. I'm sorry. There's, there's a shoulder. There's a shoulder. There's the head. Okay, this is upside down. So this is called the reverse head and shoulders pattern. And this is the price of gold. If we start uh, back in August of 2020, we got to about $2,000 per ounce. If we go to uh, uh, March of 2022, right, we dipped down, created a shoulder, we got back to 2000 If we go down here, I think this was like October of 2022, we got down to about, what, 1600-ish in gold. Remember that? The world was ending. And then we shot back up just uh, earlier, this was the banking crisis to 2000. And then last year we went down and here we are now. This is an upside down head and shoulders. All right. So what this means is this is a very bullish. This means over here we keep going up because there's now. Right. So as we go out further this way in time, we keep going up. The way you measure a reverse head and shoulders move is from the top of the head to the neckline. They call that orange line the neckline. That's the 2000 that formed that shoulder, the head, and that shoulder. That move is $450. The move up this way as we go into the future should be another $450. When you add 450 to 2050, where we are right now, you get to $2,500 gold. Hey, I want to say thank you for being here today, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 34,000 subscribers. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being so supportive of this community. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.